and we're back with another episode of World 1-1 Podcast. Before we get started, quick shout out to our sponsor, Imaginary Authors. More about them just before the break. Make sure you can and do subscribe to us on all of your podcast catchers of choice. Uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Good Pods, all of those. You can catch them there and everywhere else you can find great podcasts. And if you don't see us on your favorite podcast platform, let us know and I'll fix it. I will. All that out of the way. I am, as always, your host, Raul to the Wall. Joining me this week is Michael Brown Pants, Josh the LeGru. Hey. And finally back, Kathy! Hey, I'm back. I missed it in your face and your NES Lego and back is making me happy. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah that's the uh, NES Lego. <laughs> I have the, the um, tall neck. Yep. Tall neck from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, um, we have the coin block as well. Oh, floating around coin here block somewhere. Cast was awesome. I even Can have... Uh, the Master Sword. Oh, yeah. I've got that somewhere in a... That oh, wasn't wow. a Lego brand one. Which one was that? It's... I don't remember. It's some uh, Chinese knockoff, but... Yeah. It was fun to put together. Yeah. Have you seen the lighting kits for some of those sets? Yes. God, those Great. are cool. Yes. Great. I want to get the space postcard set and the lighting kit for that one. That one looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love the boo. Boo. <laughs> All right, so let's jump straight to, oh my god, video games. Uh, Michael, what have you been playing, other than not sleeping? Yeah. Um, I finished um, Sea of Stars recently. Oh, good. And I did not 100% it. Um, I ended up just getting the first ending I could, and then looking up the... uh, the the hundred percent ending, and I regret not looking, not getting the hundred percent ending. Really, it was so much better, like addition to the story, mm-hmm. that I I literally regret not going into it. Um, the game was phenomenal. Like yeah. it was, as I said, it was straight up as Super NES old school RPG goodness. Like it, I mean, there's obviously homages to Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, all of the old greats. Um, it was, I mean, I, and the best part is, I kickstarted this game, and right. I have a habit. Of, I, I have there's a thing that every time I kickstart something, it turns out mediocre at best. <laughs> like I've I've kickstarted so many, like Murder by Death albums and video games and and. Every one of them, like maybe one good track, the rest of it's kind of just filler. Um, although the newest Murder by Death is really growing on me. But uh, this game was fantastic. I mean, it wasn't perfect. There was a couple, like there's a mechanic that you can climb up things. And it should have been automatic. Like, instead of having to hit the A button to climb up the little ridge, it should have been automatic. Mm. Okay. Um, that gets tedious, but overall, as I said, it was a fantastic game, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who likes the old school RPGs. Um, other than that, I, I literally just last night started playing uh, Darksiders Genesis again on my PS5. Um and I decided not to port over my save file, so I just kind of started over from the beginning. Um, it's as I said, I really enjoy the game. Like, obviously, I'm biased by the whole series, <laughs> Dark but Siders. yeah, yeah. But it's as I said, like as far as that kind of game, I, I'm really enjoying it. Good. I know that was kind of an outlier for Dark Siders, wasn't it? It's 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 the only one that's not like over the over the shoulder 3D. Yeah, this was this was it's, top it, down, it plays, wasn't it, it? Yeah, it plays kind of like Diablo. Okay, yeah. I had a vague recollection. I'm like, yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, it plays kind of like Diablo. You're able to switch between war and strife, but 
it doesn't affect the story. Mm-hmm. Like, basically, they just talk to each other throughout the entirety of the game. Strife is incredibly sarcastic, and War is the straight man. Yeah. Like, there's, a, there's literally a point in it where Strife goes, no, the real serious question here is, can we fit more screaming demon faces on your armor? <laughs> you know, just little things like that. But it's it's a good game. I enjoy it. Good. Uh, Kathy, it's been forever. What have you been playing? Well, no surprise. The OG Fortnite map is back. So, of course, I've been <laughs> slaying that. But that's because a lot of my um, old Fortnite buddies have come back to the game. But that's not the only thing. I actually... I got a question about that for you, though. Since you're okay. playing OG Fortnite. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm I'm legit curious. Okay. Uh, somebody else's comment on the subject was that it had kind of been forgotten just how much big, dead, empty, useless space there was. It, it definitely... It, it, um, does it hold up? So, they actually didn't only went back to season five, so... Um, and yeah, well, not only is it such big uh, dead space, but there are so many places you can't reach without building. So if you play zero build, mm-hmm. you could get stuck real easily. In fact, they had to put um, rifts where you can kind of jump into and in you can go back in the air and fly elsewhere in special in, in places where you could get stuck because of it. But yes, it is a very very open not much place to hide yeah. compared to other places but you know but it's been nice but that is not the only game i actually picked up uh final fantasy 7 the remake oh, and i've okay. been running through that Fantastic. slowly slowly Good. Uh, <laughs> but um but that has been uh something i've been working on i got a question for you have you you played the original right yes Yes. Okay. I mean, I didn't. Okay, I didn't play the original when it first came out. I played right. it when it no, came I don't, out on the Switch. Hey, but, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just asking. Yes. When if you played? Okay. Yes. So that's, okay. Yes. I'm. Right. A, I actually am a very big Final Fantasy fan. Right. Of the, especially that. like the uh, earlier games, um, especially Super Nintendo. Um, yes. Did you get the those, pixel remasters? Yes, of course. Sure. Of yep. course. Okay. <laughs> I'm on those I'm, too. I mean, and of course, the music is awesome. But yes, I'm enjoying this because I like how they've changed yes. a lot of it. Yep. Okay, yeah, good. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying yeah, it. The remake was a lot better than I was expecting it to be, actually. You know, second one's coming out, and I I'm know. I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm going to play the, the remake again. Mm-hmm. I actually have this, I have this, like, wet dream that I'm going to be able to play Final Fantasy VII, the remake, and before that. But uh, I, I really hope <laughs> I can, but I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Well, You're going to need li- three generations of Sony hardware to play the remake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. No, I'm. that's been, that's all I've been really focusing on lately. Mostly, like I said, or OG Fortnite, just because everyone's back on. I've heard that. Yeah. My Fortnite buddies are all playing again, too. So mm-hmm. A lot of people have come back. Yeah. A lot. Have I'll, you had I'll, old friends? pop back up for the first time in ages yes yes a nice. lot of them yes <coughs> it's it's what's also kind of interesting is playing the old map with the skill level i have now compared to then we were actually talking about it back then when it was first out i would camp a lot and hide and i wouldn't engage people <laughs> so uh, um now i'm like rushing into battles probably not shouldn't be but i definitely am playing a lot more aggressively and it's nice to play this old map and actually feel like i'm playing the game so there's kind of that nostalgia going on i say you you just reminded me of sitting on twitch chatting with you while you were playing (laughs) back in the meat shield days (laughs) i'm still the meat shield (laughs) i am always going to be the meat shield but uh, this meat shield is learning how to fight back, and I own, I don't always die, but it's good. Now you're yeah. a prickly meat shield. Yep. Just, just a little. I'm just a Swiss, 
this was cheese meat shield. You're like, <laughs> yeah, you're like the cactus in Mario. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oh shit. Lagru, what's been spinning? Okay, so I did something I normally don't do. I stopped Played playing Fortnite. No. <laughs> no, I actually I gave it a good thought because a lot of friends of mine were playing, and I'm like, can I start this now? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, so I stopped that. But the um, that was the thought in my head after one too many beers. Uh, so I actually stopped playing Alan Wake 2, and I went oh. back to Alan Wake. And really? here's, why, here's why. I was about three and a half, four hours into Alan Wake 2. I was really getting into it. And I'm like, yeah. I don't remember any of this oh okay and i'm doing myself a disservice i had the remaster on my pc on my xbox and on my ps5 and so i thought i'm gonna play it somewhere else i'm gonna play the remaster again because i really loved that game and i really needed to i found myself actually kind of like i don't love this anymore as much anymore and i'm wondering why and so Mm -hmm. i went back to play the remaster started that over on my xbox Really enjoying it. And now I'm finding my love for the series again, and I'm remembering a lot of the callbacks to Alan Wake 2, or from Alan Wake 2 to Alan Wake 1, because it's in the same area it takes place in. So I'm like, okay. So I'm starting that. And I've just been very slowly going through that as my kind of my day job kind of ramps up for the holidays. Yeah. And I'm like half, three quarters of the way through that. And I think when I'm done with that, I, in the next day or two, I have, after, because we're coming up on Thanksgiving here in the United States, I actually have um, plans for the weekend, which involve actual game time for myself, because my wife is going shopping with her mom and dad <laughs> and my parents, and I'm not going. Nice. So I get time to myself at my house, which I never get. And that'll be gaming time. And I don't have to feel guilty about it. I'll got to take her as a dog. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. I can handle that. But uh, I, my goal is to get through Alan Wake and then restart Alan Wake 2 and really roll back into that game. Because I really loved it. But I was just not... It wasn't that like sticky feeling like I want with, with this kind of game. Because I really love Remedy and their games. I love Control, love Alan Wake. Really wanted to get back into it the right way. So, and I, I'm not regretting that decision at all, so. Okay. Uh, anything else? No, I, I started, I actually downloaded a light in the, uh, the light in the darkness. Have you ever mm. heard of that? Yeah. Yes. It's a free game. Uh, it's about the Holocaust. It's like a told by a, like a, from the perspective of a French family. Okay. During World War II. And it's absolutely free on Xbox I can't find it on Xbox Store. It's supposed to be on there, but I can't find it. I downloaded it on, on Steam, and it's free on Steam. Uh, okay. It's also free on PS5. I saw it on my on the PS5 Store. Ooh. So those, it's a it's a pretty narrative driven game. So it's actually, I downloaded. It. I have a fr- I haven't started it yet, but I have a friend that played it and recommended it to me. And I actually listened to a podcast about it, and uh, they were really mm. recommending. It. So I was I was. Uh, I was I, I I can't recommend or not recommend it yet because I haven't actually played it, but that's what I'm I'm going for next. Okay. All right. So I've I've got a couple, and Kathy, I got one for you because I have technically been playing uh, a a large player multiplayer online battle royale game. Okay. Uh, like Call of Duty. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I've I've sank further into Arkanoid Eternal Battle. I don't think I've heard of that one. Yeah, this is the crime. So think think big, uh, big multiplayer single player fest, kind of like Tetris ninety nine or Mario thirty five mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. All right, apply that shit to Arkanoid. That is something I could get behind. Yeah. So I was telling Wes last week, um, one of the things I really like about this is it gives you a visual indicator how, like, where you are 
and the mm-hmm. stack of 25 people that are all playing and when you're moving up and down in the rank because it's 25 players and every so often the last play or the player in last place gets fucking chopped until it's down to four. And then once you get down to the final four, it's this weird bonkers, like everybody's fighting the same boss, but kind of mm-hmm. in their own little plane of existence thing going on. It's, it's, it's nuts, but the, when you're getting down to the final four though, or before you get down to the final four, you, your screen essentially exists on a big line with all the other players and as you're moving up and down in the ranks by score you'll see all the other like players screens shifting left and right behind you to adjust where you are in the line and having that visual indicator is really really helpful truth be told Mm. like it just helps you keep subconsciously shit i'm falling behind or i'm doing okay because I'm not dead last. Right. So are you playing this on Switch? Uh-huh. I Here's the cool part. I, saw, I heard it's on Steam. It's actually... It is on Steam. That's where I first was looking at it, but... Yeah. So I was playing it last week, and I was kind of bummed because there's nobody else playing it online. So the game will serve you up uh, AI players, at least, so you can still play right. the game and enjoy some of the... I was playing earlier today... And there were real live fucking people playing. I'm like, yeah! So I'm like, holy shit, it's not actually dead. There's still That's a handful on, of people playing. And on PC, and it's it, only four bucks right now. So Yeah, solid buy for four bucks. Easy. Easy buy. Ton of fun. And then it does have a single player mode and a retro mode and, you know, just like local multiplayer. But no, it's it's a neat little game for a couple of bucks. It's a good time. I think it's just kind of a shame that it wasn't rolled out as like one of the NSO <laughs> multiplayer titles like F Zero or Tetris. Well, you know, if they had done that, that this would have been a banger. Right, but you know that's it, not one of their properties they own. That's the whole thing. Oh, I know. They should never Pac-Man have gotten wasn't rid of either, Mario. But they did Pac Man. Yeah, but they never should have gotten rid of Mario Thirty Five. Oh, was it was stupid. so good. Oh, I'm so but mad F-Zero about that. F Zero Ninety is fucking awesome though. <laughs> I can't do nothing with that game. I can't get above forty uh fortieth place. Oh, better, love better than me. I tried it and I was like, way, way, way. <laughs> I need, I need to sit there and like practice for many hours. That mm. sky lane is uh, a a big help. So. Yeah, it is. But trying to get to that sky lane. See, that's but the it, thing. I I like that they did that because it encourages you to play aggressive. Yeah, but I don't know how to play aggressive because I don't rem- I didn't really play F Zero growing up. That was one basically of the games just start slamming it onto other people and blowing them up. Yeah, but I blow myself up. <laughs> so, all right, next one up, Lagru. I got one for you. I started it earlier today. I caught it on sale. It was on my wish list. Came out not long ago, maybe a month or two. Um, and I started playing it. It reminded me of something else from a few years back that uh. You and I both were digging. Um, it's called Deflector. And it plays kind of like a uh, like a mishmash of Creature in the Well and Transcripted. And it's got almost some of the story narrative feel of Transcripted a little bit. A um, little more lab ratty though. We're your character that you're playing is literally like a little uh, microbiology experiment, and you're right. you've been created and tasked with you know eliminating viruses. But you you have a, a little like software thing talking to you, and you ride between stages on a goddamn tardigrade. Oh my god! <laughs> is this but, also on the switch? What's it called? Uh-huh. Uh, deflector. Oh, deflector. And it's on sale for like two bucks right now. Yeah, it's only two bucks. Dang. Two bucks. I might buy it. Two bucks is worth the snap. Dude, I will send you two bucks to buy it. You'll have a great time. Yeah, if <laughs> if I get to ride a tardigrave, I might it's worth two bucks. <laughs> it's it's just the little between stages thing, but the gameplay is well worth the two bucks. Like I said, it's it's combat based, but it's very heavy 
on the defensive combat where you're going to okay. do more good combat wise by deflecting enemy fire back at it. Gotcha. I shouldn't have rejoined the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really should not have rejoined because like, I, I put it I, on my wish list at 20 some bucks. But then I saw it on sale today for two. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even thinking twice now. I was waiting for well, it to go down to maybe like 15 or 10. Two bucks, I didn't even stop to think. It was no, I, would, I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't I, stop either. If you really want to play it. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I, mean, I, I could spend more than that on get, whatever. And it's got kind of like the, the varying map thing, like uh, Slay the nice. Spire, where you kind of okay. you know, want to work out your ideal I, path. I am buying this. Just, I got to grab my Switch on the break. <laughs> I see Kathy and with You're her down, switch, yeah. and I've got to grab. I got to grab mine. I found my switch, by the way. So hey, my nephew is going to be very happy when I can actually play Pokemon with him. Right. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, for the two box uh, deflectors, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I was playing earlier, and so he's like, "I don't know what the hell you're playing, but the music is fucking awesome too." So. I, um, no, I'm trying to save money here. I'm trying to right. pay off my student loan. This well, is not. Bucks. That's saving. That's, saving That's right. Money. That's saving like twenty bucks off the sticker. Girl math. What is that? Eighteen. You just saved eighteen dollars. <laughs> you just made eighteen dollars. Uh, and Michael, one for you this week too. I'm actually finishing a run of Zero Mission on my my handy dandy. Very kindly gifted to me by girlfriend, Game Boy Micro. And it makes me so happy inside. Um, yeah, I've I've just kind of been putzing a little here and there when I've got a few minutes because it's the perfect size that goes everywhere with me now. It has a permanent home in the stop in the pocket watch pocket of my jeans. So You're talking about the Game Boy Micro, right? Yeah. All right. It's, cool. it's just the right size. It's wonderful. I've still, I've got to track down a new faceplate and a new battery. Battery shouldn't be that big of a deal. Faceplates are apparently really fucking tough to find a decent one. Like, there's a bunch of people that make aftermarket ones, but the reviews on so many of them are just terrible. So do they make, like, a like a screen protector for that? Like, so you, when, you, when you get a new one, you can, like, put, like, a screen protector on it or something? Yeah, they do. Um, the other thing is that... You know, part of it is it was made that it didn't really need a screen protector because the original intention and the design was that, oh, your screen's fucked up. Just pop off the faceplate and replace it. I know. Because that was really the screen protector. But I've seen screen protectors and decals for the micro. Um, but, yeah, it's it's still totally perfectly playable. But the, the perfectionist part of me wants a, a good, clean screen. Um but yeah, I got Zoe to start playing Fusion today too, so that's that's another one. And I played through Shadow of the Colossus last night um, vicariously through Don Cheadle and Adam Sandler because we watched Rain Over Me for Fireside Night last night. <laughs> You're gonna have a great. It's so much fun. But fun fact though, Don Cheadle and Adam Sandler actually learned how to play that game for the movie, and the creator of the game signed off with his blessing on it being used in that film. So, like the scene where Sandler's telling Cheadle, you know, what all the buttons do and how to play it, yeah, it, it, it all tracks because they actually learned the game. He wasn't making bullshit up. So, also thought it was funny earlier this week, Zoe and I were laying in bed watching... Uh, like early early first few episodes of house and i'm sitting there playing zero mission on my micro and so he's like metroid because there's there's a couple episodes of house where he's yes. actually playing different he's, metroid games he's yeah. playing but yep. he was playing zero mission uh while i was sitting there laying in bed playing zero mission i'm like yeah that's what i'm playing <laughs> so that made me chuckle um oh and i've been fiddling with risk over rain returns and i haven't played a lot more of it but i've definitely played enough more of it that uh, this this is one that will very sneakily get its tendrils in into the ground and supplant itself as something that eventually takes over slowly and insidiously, but it will definitely do it. So what was it called? Risk of Rain Returns. It's the update slash remake remaster whatever of uh, Risk of Rain, like the original 2D one, not the. Oh, because I've been dabbling in Risk of Rain too. That's why I was asking. Okay. Yeah, uh, 
they uh, they just a couple of weeks ago released Risk of Rain Returns, which is like so just kind of a a prettied up uh, version of Risk of Rain. They do have like some quality of life tweaks and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of which you can actually like optionally toggle on or off. You want to play it uh, more like OG classic, but what I I don't know enough about the original to know the difference yet at this point. But what I've played of Returns has been a lot of fun. It's tough as shit, but it's really good. So, and it, it just kind of scratches that right itch. So, but that's, uh, that's what I've been playing. I think that covers most of it. So, uh, before we jump to the break, uh, a moment to shout out some thanks to our awesome sponsor, Imaginary Authors. When you need to tell your story without ever saying a word, Imaginary Authors is here to help you up your scent game with fragrances for guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Go check them out. Links down below in the show notes, Imaginary Authors. And uh, let's jump straight to the break. And we're back with the third half of the show. This week, we are taking a dive down the warp pipe and talking about great games that aren't fun. So let's uh, let's let's dig in here. I I I know we've discussed beforehand. Everybody's got everybody's got one, and I'm kind of curious to see where everybody takes us because I know I've got something in my head, and I've got a few uh, few examples and a few thoughts here. But let's start with let's start with Michael. Wait, what jumps to mind? This one's more for just me fun? than anything else. This one's more Still for valid. me than anything else. Um, is the the second Dark Siders game? Like I'm okay. I, we all know I'm obsessed with the series, and like it should have been fantastic. Like I remember came out i took time off work for it and then it got fucking delayed and then it got you know just etc cetera, etc cetera. this game has given me problems you know across the board like there was one point i was literally like one area away from 200 percent in the game and my file got corrupted so i was like fuck it i'm done but like it's just it's of the series, but it's tedious as fuck to play. Okay. Um, the third one is fantastic. The first one is my favorite. Genesis is a lot of fun. The second one, which should have been the one that, like, as I said, I love the character. I love the actor. They got to play the character. But it just, it's it's hard for me to go back to that one. So everything surrounding it was great except for playing it. Yes. Okay. I could say, uh, you know, I, I I think at least one of mine fits that bill pretty much to the fucking T. Um, Wes, what what's what's one that springs to mind to you? What what was a game that you look back on and go, that's a fucking excellent game and everybody needs to play it, but shit, that was not fun. Uh, Larry, I think you're going to be upset with me about this one, but for me, that's The Witness. You know, I'm not even going to disagree. <laughs> I, I I can defend that as a subjective thing, but I'm not going to disagree either. Like, I get it. Like the I it the way that they present a lot of the puzzles in that, in some ways, are groundbreaking, mm-hmm. and in other ways, I would rather be playing a Sudoku book. You know, it's very much a game <laughs> for the sake of the art instead of the game. Right. But that's kind of Jonathan Blow in a nutshell. I'm so sorry, guys. Give me one second. So we'll right. jump over. Josh, what do you got? Throw me something. I, sorry I'm going to throw I'm going to throw you a cuphead. OK, Ooh. I'm going to throw you a cuphead. Uh, OK, love love that game. That game did not love me. And um. That's where I'm at with it. <laughs> that game only loved fucking psychopaths and lunatics. I yeah. knew better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't yep. do it. I knew better. No, I it's, wanted it's, to love it on every level. It looked fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know it I is. would hate myself if I played it. <laughs> no, it is fantastic. I mean, I played it for quite a while, actually. And I'll, I'll just say that. I played it for a long time. I actually put way more time into that game than I thought I should. It's mm-hmm. one of those games where I'm like, I'm just going to keep playing. 
And it was kind of before the whole Souls game ish kind of thing came out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And where I'm just like, okay, yep, no, I'm done. And uh, when I, feel I like actually that came like, out like at the height of that, it kind of well, it it did. But the thing was, the hype was before that. So everyone who was hyped up for it was like, oh, we're gonna get this new kind of game. This blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And after I just kind of like surrendered to it and said, no, we're done. I actually felt so good. I, I have never felt so good, like not com- playing a game as I did that one. I was like, okay, I'm over. I'm over it. <laughs> and uh, I went to something else and I didn't feel one fucking thing. I'm just like, oh, this is this big weight, you know, <laughs> no morsel of regret. Right, right. I had none. In fact, it like just left me, you know, I was like, okay, I'm good. So <laughs> I've I'm experienced good. this and that's enough. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I tried and I'm yeah. just not, I have to just come to the realization. I'm really not that good at games. I'm not, you know, I that's just, okay. I just love what I love. You know, my question is while you were playing it though, were you having fun? I was until I wasn't. And when I stopped, that's when I stopped. You hit your wall. Yep. And the uh, the difficulty curve got too steep and said, fuck this. I'm not climbing it. Too old for this shit. Right. Right. And part of me was like, should I just keep going? Because, you know, nine-year-old Josh would have kept playing that game because he had no more money to keep, you know, keep moving on. I would have kept doing it. You know, that was like my Mega Man 3 or whatever, you know, just Mm -hmm. kept doing it. But, uh, you know, 45-year-old Josh is like, no. <laughs> no, we have more money than time now. Well, you and I, I have, have talked about much, this at length. I, I have much more games on the shelf that I can play. Yeah. And so, so if something hits me like that where I'm just like, no, I just pick another game that I have on whatever, you know, console, whatever I want, I just put something else in. So I was happy with that. Okay. Wes, I'm going to jump back to you. Let's get back to the witness. We got interrupted. Sorry about that. No, you're uh, all good. I uh, just didn't yeah. want to leave this thread dangling. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Like, if you get stuck on one of its puzzles, it can, and you feel like you can't progress a little further, it can really feel like you're just kind of staring at black and white squares, you know? And I, I get it, the world and the story behind it are amazing and i appreciate what jonathan blow was doing with the whole the puzzles aren't necessarily where you think they are and so on Mm -hmm. but i swear to god i cannot play keep playing that for at most like 20 minutes at a time now i i'm i'm gonna throw a potential counter argument and it's not me trying to defend for the sake of this is the thing just the the thing that struck me when playing the witness that kept me from feeling that so i was still moving and having fun was that if i was stuck on something that whole game that whole world is designed to encourage you to walk away and go find something else to try instead it's like if you're stuck here if it's not clicking go fucking do something else that does click with you for a while let it stew in the back of your head and by the time you wander around and see it again, you're like, oh, fuck, I've got a new idea about that. Because none of the, you, you can start any section at any point. So, but that, that was just my experience with it and how I interpreted it. It could also partially be the fact that like the revelation I don't want to spoil too, too much for anyone it's who has played the but yeah. there's the aha but, moment on the mountain. Right. I, like, that is not until, like, several, several hours in. I think I found yeah. it in the first hour. Really? Yeah. You're a lot smarter than me, me, then. I just wandered because as soon as I got out of the garden and opened up the, the, the fuck you trick door, um, I saw the mountain and went, I want up there. And just wandered that way. So. Now if it makes you feel any better. I can't be that much smarter. Because when I got there. 
and I play with it, I'm like, but what did it do? I don't, but what did it do? So it still didn't fucking click in my head for a, a while after that, but I saw the aha moment early. Right. There so. was another one that was similar, and this could just, like, this is very, very opinionated, I'm sure. But for me, there are a lot of games that put more focus on the art than the gameplay that would fall under this category. And all my oh, gripes yeah. about The Witness, like, it still says, hey, I am a puzzle game. Uh, and love it or hate it, this is the style of game I want to be, right? Yeah. Uh, when I played through Kentucky Route Zero, I could not get past the first chapter because I jet like after playing that game, I almost got the impression that they were angry they had to make it as a video game instead of a book. <laughs> Jesus, ouch, ouch! Like there are, <sighs> I feel like that's, that's just trapping for Annapurna games that don't hit. Right. Because we but were talking the- about this last week. Um, when we got together was, you know, the Annapurna stuff and, you know, like half their games are big fucking hits, but the other half that you don't really ever think about definitely feel like they went the high art route and left the game behind. Well, I get that. I also just am saying like, if I'm going to be sitting and playing this for at least two hours minimum, right? I, I need something to keep me stimulated other than the sound of minecart going through mine. <laughs> like Edith Finch, for example, great artistic yeah! game. If you don't like walking simulators, won't be for you. But regardless, like, still is like an amazing artistic specu- spectacle, both visually and thought provoking, right? Mm-hmm. Versus Kentucky Route Zero, that I was talking about trying to play through it, and with long periodic sections of nothing, which might have been intentional because they were trying to show how, like, a uh, Life in the Midwest can kind of suck sometimes, but what do you uh, mean sometimes. But uh, like, I don't know. I don't want to play through a video game that sucks just to say life sucks. You get what I mean? Like, yeah, that's kind of that whole artistic commentary, though. I so, feel like so th- that could be. So I could be. I could have just shat on someone's favorite game, but I I, I recognize it as a well a well written story. But it should not have been a video game, in my opinion. Right. I mean, I honestly, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, Edith Finch, Gone Home. I'm like, they're they're great games. They're not fun. I, that said, I don't think that they are. Are they like games? And that's a whole nother topic. I, I, I don't even want to say that they're bad they're not even like poorly designed they're just not fun but i i I would if you want to say that then i would say like the last of us yeah is not fun but it's a game yeah um i've i've got one that i think fits pretty close with you know comparing putting the last of us in this category but i'm going to save that because the first one i want to hit on is hellblade Mm. like Mm -hmm. i love i adore door treasure hellblade and i tell anybody i'm like if you have an interest in anything like mental health stuff and gaming play this and i i will send them links to like sid sid course episode on hellblade and then our interview with sid and all of that and um i am beyond anxious for the sequel which why why don't i have it in my hands yet but that's another issue altogether Right. I've seen some of their dev diary stuff, though, about making the new one. And it's really fucking cool, dude. Like, their uh, their mocap studio in their new building is awesome. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'll, I'll scrounge it up and send it to you. You should check it out. But, um, but no, it is not a fun game. It, it almost intentionally goes out of its way to be not fun. Combat is a slog. The camera is tight and constrictive. It intentionally makes everything more fucking difficult than it needs to be. But it wouldn't be what it is if it didn't make it miserable and not fun. You know, it's... And that still very much fits the definition of, yeah, no, this is a game. We have 
clear objectives and waypoints and puzzles and combat and bosses and all this shit. It's a fucking video game. It is not fun. Like, combat feels fucking miserable. It just feels like slogging through the same shit over and over and over again. But it's supposed to. It was intentionally built that way to make you miserable like Senua. So, but that game wouldn't be great if it was fun. If that game was fun, it would have sapped so much of the meaning and the poignancy out of that game. So that's that that was the first one that sprang to mind for me. So uh toss you it back actually, to Go, oh, go. Was, you actually made me it's completely different from Hellblade, but your description of it still reminded me of this. Uh I'd like to think I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember when troll games on the internet were really, really popular. And there was one that you guys I'm sure have heard of, but it was called I Wanna Be the Guy. Oh yes. And that game, when you talked about harder than it needed to be, that game actually cheated. As in, like, constantly being killed by things that were off screen. Apples fall oh, yeah. down if you're under them, fall up if you're above them. I had a roommate that played the hell out of that, actually. Yeah. And it is, so. it's, it's, it's always going to be terrible the first time you play it because, <laughs> you know, they, they go out of their way to be unfair. But it's also just straight up hilarious. I can't. I can't lie. Mm -hmm. Like, if you haven't heard of, heard of it, just go go look up a playthrough, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That game was fucking ridiculous. But no, yeah. I, I remember when that shit came out. I had a roommate that played the hell out of that way back when. Uh, Wes, throw 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 another one in. Oh, actually, shoot. you know what? I'm gonna toss this over to Lagru. Lagru, throw one in. I don't even have another one. <laughs> oh, see how you are, Jesus. You have um, <laughs> no, I mean I almost think that like one like this is almost like my guilty pleasure games. Like Duke Nukem, uh, you know, forever. It's not fun, but I love it and it's just kind of like there. Uh, Last of Us. I I do want to pull The Last of Us out. There you go. It's not, a, it's not a fun game. It's not fun. But it's a game, right? And so it's more of an experience. It's more of what I'm cerebral, you know, getting in my in my cerebellum here. I'm like yeah. actually like thinking about it. it. It's more intellectually I, stimulating than it is fun. Right, right. Like I don't enjoy killing people and the controller is vibrating every time I'm like, you know, strangling people. I don't enjoy right. that at all, but it does get me in that mindset of the, the value of the game or that. I think of really what it is. It's like that experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that's where I'm at with that one. I mean, like, I don't think that's very fun, but it's a good, it's a fan freaking tastic game. Both of them. And I would all lump both of them in there, you know. I've got one that I've started. I'm not real far into, but I, I'm getting the impression that it's going to be pretty consistent throughout that I think fits that bill, too. And, uh, Michael, this should make your ears perk up because this is this is in part been enabled by you is. Uh, oh, God damn it. Why did it go right out of my head? Uh, Death Stranding. Like, Death Stranding is really fucking cool. It is extremely interesting. <laughs> what I've played of it is great. It's not fun. No. <laughs> like, no part of this is fun. That's my life, by the way. It is, a, yeah, exactly. This, <laughs> uh, yeah. Death Stranding, I think, is the only game I've seen more divisive uh, talking about than Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, it's, and, it's fucking weird. But I like the weird. The weird makes this great to me. The gameplay is not not a fun thing. I, I don't, at any point that I've been playing this, I don't sit there and think, man, I'm having a lot of fucking fun and a big, dumb, cheesy grin on my face. And I'm like, <laughs> I want to see what... No, it's like, 
what new level of bizarre is around the corner here? <laughs> like, how right. much further can I melt my brain into what the fuck's Bill? So, and, and what I've played of it is good. It's really fucking cool. But in no world do I classify it as fun. So, but I'm I'm way invested in what it's doing and like the the message that comes through from it. But man, I mm. that's the whole thing. Yeah. That's so, the game. It's not the game. It's the message. It's the feeling you get. Yeah. So when you mentioned Last of Us, I'm like, yeah, this is the same. Ca-. I'm like, no, there, there's there's great value in this and everybody should play it kind of thing. But I, I'm going to tell you, it's not fun, but you should play it. <laughs> it's like seeing Oppenheimer. It's a great movie. You're not going to have a great time, but it's a really good fucking film. So, yeah. Wes, what else you got? I know I, I, I tossed it over to the groove for time constraints, but Wes, I, what else you got? So you made me think of, uh, when we're talking about games that are kind of like that on purpose and putting you in these dark spots, I don't know if calling this game not fun is going to put a crosshairs over me, but you made me think of Papers, Please. Ooh. Basically, Bureaucracy Simulator. But yeah. yeah that's, it, that's not a fun game. That's no, not, not fun. horrible. Yeah. Dude, it if you've not horrible. checked this out, you should. This is This is a genuinely fascinating one. Even yeah. if you don't play it, go go fucking look it up. Have you uh, have mm-hmm. you never played it, Michael? No. You know what I've, it is. Guy that did, the name, uh, but that's all. So yeah. So basically, you're playing the the guard at a, a border, uh, going into a dictatorship, and you have to make sure everyone's papers are aligned with what they need. But the law is constantly changing, and you have to keep going over the list of what happens and if you get it wrong you get a you get a demerit enough demerits they start docking your pay you don't make enough money your family starves what the fuck yeah 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 <laughs> it's it's harsh but it is it is a game that i believe you should absolutely check out even if it's not fun cuz the story goes a lot deeper than you would expect something like that too. Yeah, there's uh, some to give real you, interesting moral quandaries. To give you a mild spoiler, early on in the game, there's a, a couple that's trying to escape a country that's even worse off than yours, and the husband's paperwork is good, so he's clear to go through, but the wife's is not. And you have to decide, are you going to take the demerit and let her in? Or are you going to separate them at the border? Because he's already crossed. You only see one person at a time. And this is not a, oh, well, I'll just go back with her because of, screw screw it, she's my wife, right? No, he's already crossed the border. He is already over. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Like I said, same dude that did Return of the Ober Den. That's his handiwork. So... Michael, you want to throw another one on the pile? Soul Reaver. Okay. I love the story. (laughs) It's literally block puzzles and clunky combat. It's not fun to play. Like I why we need we need a remake anytime. Remake, remake. Oh yeah, they need to do something with it. I don't care if it's a remake or if it's a reboot. I don't care. Yeah. Just Re- so long as Michael Bell does for, uh, the voice. Keep an eye out for Dead House Sonata. Yeah, whatever happened to that? Uh, he's on fucking Twitter streaming work in progress all the time. Or not Twitter, Good. Twitch. Yeah. So it's it's still cooking. He's he like you said he streams it quite frequently. He's, I don't like, think he had anything it. to do with Soul Reaver though. I thought he did. Thought that was part of his. No, I thought it was. It was just uh, Blood Omen One. Maybe. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I knew he was somewhere in the franchise, and apparently it struck a chord with him because he's because you know 
he's been working on Dead House Sonata. So part of me thinks, you know, he's even if he wasn't involved in Soul Reaver, he's got enough love for the franchise that he's like, I'm going to do what I can with it, even though, you know, I can't call it that in name. So, yeah. But um, I'm going to throw one last one on the on the uh, funeral pyre here and uh, we'll we'll wrap this bitch. Um, this has actually been on my radar for a while because it, uh, it was unavailable for a number of years actually. And, uh, a lot of people reached out and said, please, please put this back on, on a store somewhere. Cause it was on steam. And then it, he, he voluntarily took it down. The, the creator, um, said, yeah, I don't feel good about this. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but a lot of people reached out and said, no, please put this back. Uh, it's called cart simulator and you, you play a character that for a living runs like a little vendor cart, like a coffee cart, you know, on the street in New York kind of deal. And it's, it's kind of a life sucks simulator where you can you have all sorts of options on how to do all your mundane day-to-day shit in terms of, you know, getting up, getting dressed, catching the bus to work, um, you know, how you run your business and your cart and everything else. But no matter what you do, something always happens. Like it's, it's like life. It's that kind of, you know, I was having a fucking great day until I missed the fucking bus or, you know, I caught the bus, but I realized I fucking left my bus pass at home, so I couldn't fucking, and I'm late to work. I'm missing on money that affects my ability to be able to fucking pay my rent. And it just, it creates the never ending oppressive squeeze of trying to survive in life, in everyday fucking life. That's all it's about. And just going, well, this sucks figure it out and there there there's not necessarily a magic answer that'll undo whatever the hell stupid thing happened to you that day but just you know what do you decide to do to cope with it do you say fuck this day turn around and go home and go back to bed and miss out on a day's wages and potentially not be able to uh, pay the electric bill this month or you know, do you go, well, this fucking sucks, but, you know, we, we've got shit to do, so you walk to fucking work, and you're late, and yeah, you missed some, but you at least got something, and it fucking rained the whole way, and you're just miserable, and, you know, it's it's any number of fucking things, and it's not fun. It is very intentionally not fun, but this thing just resonated with so many people that reached out to him over the years going, please put this back. And somebody actually, uh, if I remember correctly, he pulled it down over it just not being like polished enough in terms of uh, performance and coding and bugs and glitches and shit. And uh, apparently somebody reached out to him to offer to, if I remember correctly, to offer to like fund development for him to clean up what he wanted to put it back up where he didn't feel bad about selling it so that's that's a real fascinating one if you want a a a character study in this kind of thing like it's good i you know it it got pulled down and bugs and all and everybody said no please put this back this is too good you know this is too important and it means something to me it it's not fun like there, there are forums of people that talk about this shit and they're just like, yeah, this fucking sucks, man. The cost of like the coffee cups for my cart went up and I don't know how I'm going to afford to keep my business open, but I don't know what else to fucking do kind of thing. And it's, it's just people talking about trying to fucking survive, you know, and it sounds like an every day to day life conversation, but they're talking about fucking cart simulator. It's really just fascinating. So, but yeah, in, in no way can you construe that as fun. 
And you said this game's on Steam? Uh, I don't know if it's gone back up yet or not, but I know it was a work in progress. I'm going to, here, I will check for you while we are conversating here. But yeah, um, last I saw it, he was in the process of getting it back up, um, or at least, you know, working on finishing it. Um, so I swear to God, if I don't find this thing, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it was cart simulator cart life. That's what it cart is. Life. I, uh, cart life. And let's see. It's not back up on steam currently as of recording, but you can stick it on your wish list and it's got a planned release date of sometime this year in theory. Now, the other thing I heard too, is that with the, with the rework coming to it, he was supposed to be releasing it on other platforms as well. Finally. So that's, uh, that's what I know. Um, but it is, it does have a listing on steam. Um, so you can go wish list it, but not, not up for sale again yet, but should be coming. But I think that's a good place to wrap this up. Um, anybody got any last thoughts we want to uh, add before we close this bitch out? I will say, I think regardless of my opinions on them, I won't say even the ones that games I roasted the hardest in this, looking at you, <coughs> Kentucky Route Zero, I still think there's something to be enjoyed for them. All of them ha that I think we brought oh, up yeah. have at least some artistic value, regardless of, like, that's the whole point of this topic. Yeah. So, as much as I say Kentucky Route Zero should have been a book instead of a video game, and you say Edith Finch might have been a better movie, they still all have value, and I think that's something, before someone is gets angry at us, that we need to reiterate at least one more time. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I won't even go into any depth, but I would also say Shadow of the Colossus might fall into this category. Oh, oh God. Don't yeah. even get me on that. Don't oh man, that. we we gotta wrap it up, Larry. Oh yeah, no, I'm not going deep <laughs> in it. I'm just, I I would be remiss without giving it a mention. Oh, God. That's its own okay. whole complex thing, <laughs> but I do think it could fit in here depending on your taste. So, but in any case, I want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in uh, this week and joined us. Thank you to all my friends for coming and hanging out with me, Josh, Michael, Wes, and. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see you back here next week for another episode of World One One Podcast. Uh, just a reminder: make sure you uh, subscribe to us in whatever podcast catcher you use or YouTube. That way, you get fresh episodes every week delivered straight to your inbox, free of charge. There's no better value on the internet. No scams, no bullshit, no nothing. Just free goodness right here on the World One One Podcast. Press start to engage your mind. Peace. And Wes, fuck you. The witness is great. <laughs> <laughs>